Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, August 25th, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves is emphasizing the need to give financial assistance to priority areas of study, which can help address some of the issues in the country. Dr. Gonsalves, who is also Minister of Finance, said on WeFM on Thursday that government has systematically concentrated on helping students, particularly with the Economically Disadvantaged Program, which can go to a maximum of 150000 for law and medical students and $120,000 for others. Three or four years ago, we decided to provide a list of priorities. Most students fit within the priorities. Priorities in relation to the program, in relation to the employment requisites, the manpower needs. If you apply now for a student loan for psychology, you're not going to get it because it's not a priority. If you apply for sociology, anthropology, you're not going to get it. Not that these subjects are not important subjects. Of course, if you, by your merit, you get a scholarship, you study whatever you want to study. Hmm. Uh, you're, you see how they come in? Yes. But if you come in for the economically disadvantaged student loan program, there's a pot which it has to be circumscribed. The Prime Minister, however, advocated the need for persons seeking higher learning to pursue studies at the University of the West Indies, where the economic cost would be paid. He also advised students to do their first year, if it is possible, at the local community college or UWI open campus. We used to, Danny, give economically disadvantaged student loan for you to go anywhere you want to study. But we have restricted that. Save and accept the program is not available inside of the region. Because when we look at the list of those who have who are delinquent in making payments, hmm. a number of them have gone outside who go to the United States to study hmm. after they are finished with the student loan after they get it a very high proportion of them stay away and a significant number of them do not make the repayment. Now, this is a pot which has to revolve. The Prime Minister also advised persons who are looking to pursue studies abroad to seek the necessary guidance before selecting their area of study to avoid financial pitfalls. The students can go to the CPO's office, they can go to their teachers. Unfortunately, I would say there's a criticism which I make every single year since I've been in office of the Ministry of Education and the schools and the Office of the Service Commission is that they do not provide a sufficiency of information in a form which is readily available and understood and digestible by the students. They don't give as good career advice and they don't give the kind of advice which I'm now giving here, Danny, in respect to the financing. Seeking to ensure that the youths are given the opportunity to receive proper secondary education, the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the Police Cooperative Credit Union, the PCCU Limited, have for the last three years 
collaborated to provide scholarships and bursaries to successful CPEA students here in SVG. At the annual scholarship award ceremony held last evening at the PCCU headquarters, 47 students were presented with the 2017 awards. We hear more in this report from Nikita Tony. The team preparing tomorrow's leaders today, 47 youngsters here who were successful in this year's Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment CPEA examinations were presented with scholarships and bursaries through a joint effort by the RSVG Police Force and the Police Cooperative Credit Union, highlighting that the event marked the third joint scholarship award ceremony by the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the Police Cooperative Credit Union, PCCU. President of the PCCU, Horace Williams, noted that the joint initiative is known to award the most scholarships and bursaries to students here in SVG. Today, the PCCU is issuing educational passport to the future. Ten students in the form of three scholarships and seven bursaries for successfully passing the Caribbean primary exit assessment, the CPA, I advise you not to take the scholarships for granted. Do your best at all times. In his remarks, Commissioner of Police Ronald Hathaway urged the 2017 recipients to take advantage of their opportunity and to not allow Idle Companion to lead them astray. I spent over $120,000 thus far to get you where you are today, going into secondary school. This is no small amount of money. I implore you to take very good care of these books and develop a passion for learning. Read widely, listen attentively, and progress continuously. The COP further encourages the students to stay true to their morals and values. Do not get engaged in deviant behavior patterns. Say no to delinquent behavior. Stay away from drugs. And remember the values taught by the police officers who are at your schools during the day program. Do not disappoint us. Remember that you're the sons and daughters of disciplined men and women, police men and women. Delivering the featured address, Crown Counsel in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, Sigilla McDowell, advised the recipients to always aim to look, sound, and be successful as they go forward on their new educational journey. In this first class, it is not reserved for people who are rich, because I am not. You are not. It is reserved for people who are rich in ideas, not rich with money. So once you have good ideas, once you have a vision of success, by all means, first class is yours. Take advantage of every opportunity that would come through your secondary education. 37 of the students were awarded scholarships through the RSVG Police Force, while the other 10 recipients received scholarships and bursaries from the PCCU. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. Parents here have been urged to pay close attention to the lyrics and overall music that their children listen to. The call comes from bandmaster of the RSVG Police Band, Daniel Hall, during his address at the 9th Annual Police Band Summer Program graduation ceremony earlier this week. Noting that music is used to portray various messages and ideas, Hall said parents have the responsibility to ensure that their children are being uplifted by the music they listen to. You must be careful how the music they listen to, as it can always cause negative consequences. Some lyrics in some songs encourage you to shoot and kill. And when they see police officer, they say, burn them with fire. <laughs> then, which are basically portraying violence. This can also lead to deviant behaviors in our children. Parents, I am warning you. One of the things you have to monitor with your children is the kind of music that they are listening. They don't, they don't make their songs as colorful as long ago, you know. Be violence in preaching. Some of them. With the aim of the summer program being to develop the minds of the participants through music and other creative areas, Hall encouraged parents to continue to push their children to play a musical instrument. Children, do not let what you have learned go a waste. If you have an instrument, continue to play and practice. 
Some schools have instrument you can get one to play if you are in the school. Parents, continue to encourage your children, send them to music lesson, and it can help to improve their academic performance. We always preach that every time. Leader of the opposition New Democratic Party, Dr. Godwin Friday, continues to push for better health care service here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Earlier today, the opposition leader joined the picket line outside at the country's main health facility, the Milton Cater Memorial Hospital, where a few persons gathered with placards in hand, expressing concern with the health care service. Calling in on NDP's New Times radio program, Dr. Friday said the picket was a necessary activity and he believes that more persons should get on board so as to make their demands for better health care service more pronounced. What they're doing is they're raising the issue of the health crisis in this country to a high level of, of um, national prominence so that people will consider it and say, well, listen, this is not the way things should be. We can do better than this. And if we can do better, how do we do better? We have told the, the people that for the New Democratic Party what we will do. But in the meantime, the administrators at the facility there must be made to, to um, recognize the shortcomings that are there and to, to, um, to improve those things that can be improved now. And there are many things that can be done, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, the, the, the basic conditions under which people are, are living there, it's, um, uh, it's, it's terrible, and we need to improve it. And when people say, that, oh, you're just being um, alarmist and so on, it's not the case. Go down and check for yourself. And I think we can do a hell of a lot better than that, and I want the people in this country to, to, to trust us and to engage with us and to say, well, yes, let us move forward. Stop holding back the country, let move forward and create those conditions. Dr. Friday stressed further that the people elected the government to bring about change and development and that it is a task the NDP is fully ready to take on. Without security in the country, I saw this before, the government, they provide security for the people. They provide basic, decent health care, meaning that you have a healthy population that can work and a good education system so that you have people who are uh, educated and skilled who can build the economy. That is how you create a, uh, a successful country, a country where you have production that will be sufficient to meet the needs of the people and you have prospect of growth. In St. Vincent, you know, people seem to have, everybody seems to have lost hope that things can't get any better. We have to accept mediocrity. We have to accept things that are falling apart. Oh, this is the best we can do. That is nonsense. Come on, people. Let us, let us think of things that we know we can do better. Let's create the change and move forward. The NDP leader said health is a priority and must be treated as such by any government. To do something about this facility, but if this is a premium, uh, the, the premier health facility in the country, we have to do better than that. The facility itself, it's, it, I mean, it's depressing to be there. This is, I'm just talking about the physical environment, and I know that the, 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 the medical staff there, the doctors and nurses, there was one person I spoke to was praising very highly one of the doctors there, you know, but this is something that takes heroic effort on the part of the medical staff to deliver basic care, and we have to do better. And this is the thing that we, we want to promise the people, what well, we do promise the people of this country, that this is something we're going to give very high priority to as a new Democratic Party government. You have to have a proper facility in the sense of a modern purpose-built medical facility that will be more efficient, that will lift people's spirits if you are living, if you if you are there spending time, and we have to do better. And I promise the people of this country we will do better than that. We will give us a priority to build a new facility so that the people, when they go there, they can get good treatment, meaning that the services will be provided, but also in circumstances and surroundings, in, in, in an environment that is conducive. Issues surrounding food safety and quality, as well as good hygiene practices, were highlighted at a workshop illustrating the need for good manufacturing practices. Production manager of Vinci Fresh Limited, Inga Abbott, said the workshop was to share knowledge with key stakeholders on best practices in the food and manufacturing industry, as well as provide greater opportunities for Vincentian products to reach the international market. 
Um, we are currently hosting the workshop on best manufacturing practices or GMP good manufacturing practices and we did say yes when the idea was pitched to us because we're currently on the implementation phase of our HACCP and this is definitely going to help us move towards getting our products more on the international market and enabling our production assistants to understand more in depth the reason why we push and we implement certain stages that we are at currently on the floor. The workshop so far has been definitely one of importance. Um, it is enabling us to go further in depth as to why certain steps and procedures are followed and why we do certain things to take a small gear towards an international market, but really for our local people to understand and to know the importance of personal hygiene, receiving good fresh raw material in certain conditions as well as the importance of keeping records. Also speaking at the workshop was chemical engineer and instructor at the Sina Institute in Colombia, Laura Cast Lanos, who highlighted why good hygiene practices are of key importance to the food industry. Uh, one of the most important things about it is that uh, we can avoid all the disease that are coming from the food poison or something like that. This is, these numbers are increasing so we have to apply this good manufacturing practice to decrease that number of illness that are um, consequent of a bad manufacturing practices. So I'm very happy to be here. I hope that all the knowledge that we are sharing with you um, have to be uh, executed or implemented in all the processes or practice, food practice that you are developing here. It is very important to uh, do the first steps to uh, get like better processes, better quality in all the food processing. Meanwhile, Senior Clark at the Adult Continuing Education Unit, Latoya Grant, spoke on some of the courses already conducted and others in the pipeline. Week is Good Manufacturing Practices. In October 16 to 22nd, that's the tentative date, that is the dried fruits course. And then sometime next year, we're hoping to have the fine chocolate course. The last two courses are highly anticipated courses. A lot of persons are interested in them already. So I'm just using this opportunity as well to encourage Vincent Trans persons who have agro-processing backgrounds who are actually involved in agro-processing, especially the small business owners, to, be, to come and register at Adult and Continuing Education at 457-1504 to be a part of any one of these courses. They will benefit you in the long run. Vincentians are being encouraged to adopt good hygienic practices to avoid being contaminated with the bacteria which causes conjunctivitis, commonly known as red eye. A release from the Ministry of Health stated that so far, SVG has recorded 294 cases of the infection and has appealed to the public to adhere to various hygienic practices, which will go a long way in reducing infection. Conjunctivitis creates symptoms such as redness, itchiness, production of excessive tears, as well as creates a clear or yellow discharge which causes the eyelids to stick together, as well as swelling of the eyes. To avoid catching the bacteria, persons are advised to keep unwashed hands from the face and eyes, as well as to wash hands often with soap and warm water, or alternatively, utilize alcohol-based hand sanitizer. It also recommends that one should disinfect frequently touched surfaces, such as doorknobs, countertops, and shared spaces. Efforts continue to be made here to raise awareness and further advocate for persons living with disabilities. Voice of the Disabled, a non-profit organization, is seeking to do just that. The organization, which was formed in late 2016, will be launched this Saturday, August 26th at the Connery Learning Resource Center under the theme, Where There Is No Vision, The People Will Perish. The launch event will commence at 2.30 p.m. Mm -hmm.